Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am interrupting my usual programming to break the news that Louis Vuitton is yet again doing another price increase and it has been confirmed as of today, officially, February 15th. So it's happening in the next 24 hours or so, definitely sometime this week. So there really isn't much time to react. The rumors have been floating around for a few days now and I know that a lot of you had reached out to me asking me to confirm, but I wasn't able to confirm until today because it was officially announced announced in writing in various different outlets in the industry news. So let me just break some of this down for you. I don't have the new prices. When I do, I'll do my usual Excel spreadsheet going line by line from old price to new price and showing the increase amount and also the percentage of increase. But I want to give you a little bit of context and background as to what's driving these price increases or supposedly driving these price increases based on some of the news that was reported. So apparently a spokesperson from Louis Vuitton recently shared that the stores worldwide, worldwide, so no countries are being spared, worldwide will be hit up with these price increases and the increases will cover leather goods, fashion accessories, perfumes. So it sounds like no category is going to be spared either. I don't know if this means every canvas item and every leather good or it just select. It doesn't get into detail in terms of how much it's going to go up by, but speculation tells us anywhere from five to 20%, which really at this point, we, we shouldn't be that surprised because the last time they did a round of increases was in October of 2021. I'll post that video if you missed it, if you want to see the format of how I go through each price increase. And, uh, for the pochette accessoire in particular, it went up quite a bit. So to see double digit percentage increases now really shouldn't shock us. It's probably not fun to hear, but no surprise anymore. So it's interesting. Um, it says here that the increases are a result of increased changes in production costs, raw materials, transportation, as well as inflation. And we know that we're in a pretty high inflation market right now. Uh, sometimes we talk about getting into a hyper inflationary market, and that's not really good for us on many different levels. But it sounds like LVMH, which is the parent company that owns Louis Vuitton, as well as many other brands, is citing inflation as well as higher production costs and material costs as the reasoning behind these price increases. Late last month, so that's in January, uh, LVMH's full year earnings for 2021 were reported out. And at the time, the chairman, Bernard Arnault, said that he believes the French luxury goods conglomerate, that's them, LVMH, has quote unquote, has enough wiggle room to raise prices. So I'm going to just pause there. You guys comment down below. Let me know if you think that is true. That is very much subjective and very relative based on where you stand. If you are the chairman and you're a multi-billionaire, one of the wealthiest um, individuals in the world, in the top three, I think at this point, with a huge conglomerate that you're running, then the way he sees it, yeah, according to him, there's enough wiggle room to raise prices. Then he goes on to say that um, they really need to protect their margins, especially in an inflationary environment. So I get it. This is a business first and foremost. And unfortunately, when it comes to profits and earnings, there really isn't much room for loyalty. So we'll see how consumers will react to this. But there have been multiple, multiple rounds of price increases. And I don't think that Louis Vuitton is really losing any money as a result of it. If anything, Think they're becoming more profitable. So as much as we might grumble about it from a business standpoint, I think they're doing quite well and they've, rec they've actually recovered uh, quite well from the pandemic. Uh, you know, they actually lost um, quite a bit of profits and then they regained a lot in the last couple of years. If you are interested, you can go back and look at their financials. Um, and then he goes on to caution the uh, Louis Vuitton management team and says, still, we must remain reasonable. So whatever that means, again, that's going to also be very subjective, reasonable. Now, for some of us out there who are Louis Vuitton customers, maybe the last few rounds of price increases felt completely unreasonable, or maybe they felt reasonable. I don't know. I, I don't really have any extreme reactions either way. I'm kind of in the mindset of it's business, and as long as there's consumer demand, 
you know, this stuff is just sort of expected, but I acknowledge the fact that there are a lot of us out there who are looking to get an item and either it's not available because it's not in stock or you had it, but you had to return it because of a quality issue. We all know about that. And so now you're hoping to get another one, but there's a price increase coming. So you'd have to pay more. That's not fun. You know, there are a lot of issues and we can go on and on. It's, it's a complicated web, but um, this is the perspective that LVMH management is putting out there. Um, it's interesting also because there's some news around the uh, watches and jewelry as well, not just with Louis Vuitton, just in general, the luxury world. But uh, for Louis Vuitton, they're saying there's also a rising cost of gold and diamonds. It seems like everything is going up. That's what it means to be in an inflationary market, right, at the end of the day. And so it seems like the jewelry and the watches are going to go up as well. We've seen that with other brands, other watch brands. We all know how difficult it is to get a Rolex these days. Um, so yeah, it seems like this is impacting every corner of the luxury market. And, and there is an article out there by the fashion law. If you don't know the fashion law, I'll actually link the article down below in my description box. And I tend to follow them on Instagram as well, because they have some interesting uh, updates from the luxury you know, industry. Um, but they talk about how the average price of luxury watches in general has gone up and is increasing every year. So it's no different from luxury handbags. So yeah, that's, that's definitely happening. It has been happening. And then I also want to share that, you know, I think most of us know that Dior is part of LVMH. They are run separately, but they're owned by LVMH. And Dior is the second largest brand in terms of revenue generation for LVMH. So they count heavily on Louis Vuitton, and then Dior. And it's interesting because there was a Dior price increase just recently, a few weeks ago, right at the very top of the new year. And there was a lot of buzz about that. And I know some of you went out and purchased something that was on your wish list, or maybe even panic bought. I didn't do anything because there was nothing that I was really gunning for at Dior. But it seems like the price increases are happening with each and every brand. We know with Chanel, it's been happening for a while. I think there were three official price increases last year. So I wouldn't be surprised if that trend were to follow. Now with Dior, it's interesting because some some are saying that it's a better value to get Dior, for example, like the classic Lady Dior bag versus now getting a Chanel classic flap because Chanel's prices have gone up so much. So there is an interesting conversation to be had there. Maybe I'll make a separate video if there's enough interest. Let me know in the comments. Um, talking about whether the Lady Dior is now, you know, somewhat of a replacement for the classic flaps because people are turned off by Chanel. Um, not to compare them because they're apples and oranges and they're both quite iconic classic bags. But if people are getting turned off by the Chanel prices, then do you think that Dior is going to do even better? Because some of the news out there that I've been reading, some of the articles, seems to imply that Dior is actually benefiting from all the Chanel price increases because people are flocking to Dior. And because there still is that price difference, there's a significant price difference you know, thousands of dollars of a difference between a Lady Dior and a classic flap. So, you know, people with money get to choose what they want and what they want to spend it on. And maybe they're going to choose a Lady Dior at the end of the day. You guys know my feeling. I have both. I have the classic flaps and I also have the Lady Dior. I have a love-hate relationship with the Lady Dior. I did a whole video on it. I'll link it up above if you missed it. It's a beautiful bag, but it's also kind of an annoying bag to use from a functionality standpoint, but that's besides the point. I just thought it was interesting to have like a holistic conversation about the price increases in general and all the different moving parts. Like Louis Vuitton is definitely having a price increase very soon, maybe in the next 24 to 48 hours. It sounds like it's going to happen this week, which is why I wanted to get this video out as quickly as possible. And I pushed out my other videos that I pre-recorded and I'll just I'll have them go live a little bit later. I thought this was a little bit more important to get out in a timely manner. But the fact that there are some brands benefiting from other brands having price increases, like I just mentioned, Dior versus Chanel. Um, the way one of the articles framed it was that the Lady Dior is sold at a 30% discount. That's how they framed it, as a 30% discount from its Chanel counterpart. Now, I don't know if I would see it like that, but I guess if you were to just compare the straight up prices, the numbers side by side, yeah, you could look at it that way if it's just strictly numbers, but 
I just, I think it's interesting. I don't know what you guys think. Is this as interesting to you as it is to me? Um, and then the last piece that I thought was very interesting, um, LVMH cited three reasons, right? Production costs, uh, higher material costs, and inflation as what's really driving these price increases for Louis Vuitton. But there have also been some news around uh, disgruntled workers, disgruntled employees. So it wasn't very long ago, it was pretty recent when there was some coverage around uh, hundreds of Louis Vuitton's factory workers going out on like essentially a strike protesting. It was kind of like an organized walkout demanding better pay and just better working conditions. So they were demanding better wages, protesting against the working hours. And it sounds like as a response to that or as a defense to that, perhaps Louis Vuitton then agreed to raise the workers salaries by an average of 150 euros per month. Now, I don't know, relatively speaking, based on what they already make, if 150 euros per month is a significant increase or if it's a measly increase. I don't know because I don't have the baseline numbers, but it doesn't sound like a whole lot at all for any first world country. Um, and then they also reduced the working hours from an average of 35 hours a week to 33 hours a week. Again, it's, um, I don't know if that's significant enough as a two hour, but I, again, I don't know the whole story either. So you kind of have to, you know, take everything with a grain of salt. But I do wonder if that also is putting pressure on Louis Vuitton, not that they need to increase the prices because again, they're highly profitable and have been, but like Bernard Arnault said, very transparently, he's trying to protect the profit margins, meaning he wants to make more profit if he can. And I wonder if because the wages are going up and they're reducing work hours, maybe they need to hire more staff. Who knows? That could also be another part of the story. That could be another sort of pressure point that's driving these price increases. We will never know the full story. We only know what's reported out and then just kind of pieced together. But um, I thought it would be interesting to just kind of give the backstory as much as I could. I, like I said, I will follow up with my usual Excel spreadsheet, sharing all the old versus new prices and, you know, the, the items that were impacted with the new round of price increases this week at some point, as soon as I'm able to see the new prices. As of now, I don't see the new prices reflected on the website, but I feel like in the next few hours, they'll be up and I'll be following up with another video. So hopefully this was interesting. Um, let me know your thoughts down below. What else do you think is missing from this story? I feel like there's something else and I just can't put my finger on it. Um, there's obviously the whole like, they want to maintain their prestige and they want to be um, exclusive and all of that. We talk about Chanel and Hermes being that way also, but I don't know. I feel like there's just something else that's missing that I'm trying to like grasp. But if you know any other information, if you've got any intelligence from your essay or various connections, then please let us know in the comments. I think it'd be very interesting for us to piece this all together. And please give this video a thumbs up if you like this kind of video, just really kind of of the moment, spur of the moment thrown together. And um, if you are going to do some panic buying, just be very thoughtful and mindful and calm if you can because you also don't want to panic buy and then have regret so you know I don't know you've got maybe a few hours to respond to this and uh, hopefully if you have a real wish list item that you've been hoping to get you can get your hands on it in time okay see you soon bye bye